Corey Haim and Gary Busey both star in this adaptation from the book, Cycle of the Werewolf, written by Stephen King. The film starts off being narrated by Jane Coslow, now an adult, but telling the story as it was when she was a child, where the film takes place. A man named Arnie Westrom has just been killed by an unseen beast. His head sliced clean off by one swipe. Jane goes on to say that Arnie was a chronic drunk, and since he was killed near a train track, it was discarded as nothing more than an accident by the authorities. Marty Koslow, who is paralytic, is her brother, and their relationship as siblings isn't very healthy. Their mother and father are always leaving her in charge of him as they make haste with their own endeavors. Marty Koslow, played by Corey Haim, takes a liking to his Uncle Red, played by Gary Busey, who is not on the favorite list with Marty's mother, because Uncle Red is an eccentric joker with a crude sense of humor and is also an alcoholic. One by one, throughout the film, people are killed by an unseen beast. Marty becomes suspicious with his young mind that the assailant isn't even human, but could be a werewolf. He mentions it to his Uncle Red, but he remains skeptic. After Red builds Marty a hot rod wheelchair, Marty goes out and begins to set off fireworks on a small bridge in the forest. He is almost attacked and killed by a werewolf, but Marty manages to shoot his biggest firework into the monster's left eye. Later on, after Marty informed his sister Jane of this incident, it is discovered by Jane that the werewolf is Reverend Lau because of his patched left eye. Lau soon discovers that Marty and Jane both know what he is and sets out to kill them both. On a night when their parents are away with no one but skeptic Uncle Red to protect them, werewolf Lau attacks. After struggling to get the only silver bullet made from Marty and Jane's necklaces back into the gun, Marty shoots werewolf Lau in the right eye, killing him. After this, the relationship of Marty and Jane are strengthened forever. Werewolf is a 1987 TV series starring John J. Rourke as Eric Colbert. The pilot for the series starts out in a bar scene, through the eyes of an unknown individual. He takes a seat at the bar and orders a drink, and when he reaches for it, a swollen pentagram can be seen on the palm of his hand. It then begins to bleed. Later, a couple are shown being attacked by a wild beast just outside the bar. Later on, the character Eric is then introduced as a college student with a lovely girlfriend named Kelly and a roommate named Ted, who is Kelly's brother. One night, Ted hands Eric a loaded revolver with silver bullets and asks him to end his life because he's a werewolf and he's the one who's been killing people. Eric refuses, but humors Ted and waits until 20 past midnight in order to prove that Ted is just confused. Ted changes right in front of Eric and attacks him. Eric finally shoots and kills him, but sustains the cursed wound. Later, Eric is charged with murder, but sells his car in order to get out on bail. He eventually has Kelly lock him up in a storage facility until he goes through his first change. After seeing the walls of the facility almost being pummeled to the ground, and hearing growling sounds on the other side, she begins to suspect that Eric may be telling the truth. Time passes and a bounty hunter named Rogan is sent to catch Eric, who misses his sentencing court date. Eric is now on a mission to find the werewolf that infected Ted, who in turn infected him and kill him. A ship captain named Viano Scorzini turns out to be the culprit. After Eric has confronted him, he runs away afraid, but later in a motel, after being tied up by Kelly, Viano kidnaps her. Rogan shows up and tries to take Eric away in a box truck, but Eric then changes and escapes, leaving Rogan unharmed and a believer in werewolves. Eric finds Scorzini with Kelly and fights him and loses. Scorzini then runs off into the forest. Eric wakes up to find Kelly waiting for him. After saying his goodbyes, he leaves her because he is now a fugitive. He then sets off to find Scorzini and to end this curse once and for all. When the world isn't the same as our minds believe, then we are in a nightmare. 
Nothing is worse than a nightmare. Except one you can't wake up from. There were a total of 29 episodes before the series was taken off the air, without a conclusion for the main character's ailment. During its run, however, it gained a great fan base. The producers of the show established a 1-800 number you could call in order to report real werewolf sightings, and many called to report just that. Tales from the Crypt was a very successful late-night horror series running on HBO. In this season 2 finale, a little boy named Theodore is adopted by the Culberts, a rich couple and given a life of luxury. He is constantly being fed chocolate, cakes, snacks, and other sweet foods and is given all the expensive toys to play with throughout the episode. He also ends up befriending the house butler, Toby. Together they would play board games and cards and it comes apparent that Toby is more of a parent than the very couple that adopted him. On a walk during the twilight, Theodore asks the Colberts if they could go out like a normal family to a ball game or a movie. They decline, supposedly, because they have to work, but say that they are planning something very special for him, and when inquired, they don't say anything other than it is a secret. Finally, on one night, Theodore is awakened by a frightened Toby, asking him to leave the house with him. They are stopped on the stairs by Miss Colbert, and she reveals her and Mr. Colbert's secret by burying her vampire fang. It turns out that the candy and cakes they had been feeding Theodore were to sweeten his blood more, and that Toby was to babysit Theodore for them in exchange for everlasting life. Toby does not want to go through with it, and is blindsided and killed by Mr. Colbert, leaving Theodore running out of the home with the Colbert's dog, Lilitu, chasing him. Theodore stops and doubles over in pain on the property moor under the full moon with the Colberts at his back. The vampire Colberts think they are in for a meal when Theodore reveals his own secret. I have a secret too, Mrs. Colbert. I'm sure you have, dear. And mine is better than yours. I am a werewolf. And I have an appetite for vampire. Mike Shimron, the boy who played Theodore, was given a 1991 Young Artist Award for his performance in this episode. Larry Drake, the man who played Toby, also appeared in the Tales from the Crypt episode, and All Through the House, where a woman makes the mistake of murdering her husband while an escaped psychopathic mental patient runs around dressed as Santa. Larry